I've been working on a macOS app which is really focused on the user being able to enter data into forms which is stored in JSON format. I then want those JSON files to be used to create reports using TypeSt. I want to be able to add flags to headings and also have the option to exclude a section in my report. So let's get started building our types file. The first thing I want access to is that JSON data. And I'm gonna do that by passing in the path as a string to where this JSON file is located. And this JSON function will go ahead and decode that and we'll assign that to data. Now, after we've done that, we can start to provide this section some structure. And you're gonna notice I'm using level four headings here, and that's because we're gonna be including this types file in our main report document. So that will have headings one through three, hence the level four headings here. So let's start working with the title. I wanna be able to access that title from our JSON file. So I'm gonna look up that key title and to access it, we are going to use data, that's where the data is being stored in that JSON file, and then provide it the key title. So we can access that value of port 3285. Next, the port status, I'm gonna include this as a item in the list, again, data. Now the key here is select, and the user would have that option of choosing open or close, maybe they choose open, but we have to be careful how we access this key, because this is, this is nested data under fields. So first we're going to provide the the key fields followed by select. Next we're going to move on to description. Again, data, be careful. This is nested data. So the description is a child of fields. Now, in this Swift UI form, I want the user to be able to use types markup. So I'm going to include this in an eval and then switch the mode here to markup. Maybe there's a better way to do this, but it just happens to be working for me here. If you know a better way, let me know down in the comments. All right, and we'll do the same thing for comment here. So we'll just go ahead and change that uh, key value. So now the next thing we want to be able to do is determine whether we are going to include this section in the report or not. And for that, we're going to be using some file state keys is ignored and is complete. For this, we're going to need a predicate. So we're going to go if data, that's our JSON file, and then we're going to access that key file state and is ignored. So if the file state is ignored is equal to false, then I want to be able to run this part of the report. I want this to be included. However, there's also a second thing that I want to be able to check, and that's whether the user has indicated that they've actually completed this form. So we can access this through the file state. Wait a minute, that should be state. Uh, let me go ahead and fix that. So file state dot is complete. So if both of these conditions are true, then we can go ahead and produce the report. Otherwise, it will not be included in the main report. Up next, we are going to format our title based on whether the user has indicated in the form whether this section is flagged or not. Now again, we have a predicate and if the user has indicated that this is a flag section, then we wanna be able to format the title. Otherwise, we're just gonna return the default title. So how can we make this stand out? Well, maybe we could use an emoji here and maybe a, let's go flag.red. And to really make it stand out, let's even make that text red as well. And let me go ahead and add in that key title. The problem is we have this fantastic predicate, which is deciding whether or not we're going to display this content. And this means I can't just write some preamble and bring it in for each file that I create. I'm gonna be creating a lot of these. So the solution is to create a function which is going to allow me to really minimize the amount of text in each of these types files. So let's go ahead and include a function in my types, dash config.type, where I'm going to import all functions. And for the purposes of this video, it's just gonna be a blank file, but in my actual project, this is actually defining the template for my full report. 
So here we're going to define a function. I'm going to call it insert underscore JSON underscore content. We'll deal with those parameters a little bit later, but I just want you to see that it is going to return what? Well, it is that predicate. So we're going to go ahead, delete that and paste it into our function. Now, don't forget, we need to close that square bracket there, meaning that we're going to have to go back to our file here and remove that square bracket at the end. So we're left with just the content. Let's go back and take a look at our function. Do we need any parameters in our function signature? Well, it turns out there's one obvious one, and that's data that we're going to need to pass in to our function as an argument. So we have a parameter of data. Are there any others? What else am I going to put into this function? Well, notice I have content here that is going to be different for each of these types files. I'm not always going to have port status, for example. So I want to be able to input a parameter of content within my function. But we have to be careful here. If we go back, we can see that within the content, we are passing in, again, data. So when we go back here, we need to make sure that we're passing data into the content that we're going to be passing in to our function. All right, so let's go ahead and de let's go ahead and call the function now. So we're going to go insert underscore JSON underscore content. We're going to pass in data as our first argument here. And well, we that is just data, which is the variable assigned to our JSON decoded file, and then content. Okay, this is where it's going to get exciting. How do we pass in content as an argument here? Well, we're going to be using a closure here. So an anonymous function where we're going to pass data in, that's our content, and it's going to return what? It's going to return our content. So let's go down and select that port status description and comment. We're just going to paste it in there. And essentially, we are now done. This is the content uh, that I've just highlighted here. It is an argument to our function. Now, just one last thing before we finish up. I am going to be creating a lot of these types templates. So I want a snippet that's going to instantly give me this template. The problem is accessing that JSON file name within the snippet. So for example, when I go JT, boom, it should provide me with a template ready to go. I can just start going and populating it with like, for example, the next heading. The problem is going to be including that JSON file name. So how do we create the snippet? I'm just going to highlight this and we're going to go yes, new snippet. I need to give it a name. So I'm going to call it types and JSON. Next, I'm going to provide the same key that I used before, JT, so that when I press tab, it's going to expand this snippet into the buffer and place my cursor at this heading. So I'm going to use $0 for that. Now, the hard part is to access the name of that JSON file. Now, if you're interested in how to do this step by step, I have a video for that. Check up above. So I'm going to give you a very quick way of dealing with this right now. What I need is the name of the types file name because that's going to be the same as the JSON file name. And you see here that I have this buffer name function in ELISP that can return that. The problem is it has a file extension. And wow, do I love ELISP. There is a function called file name sans extension that I can pass in the return value of the buffer name into, and it will return just the file name. It's awesome. So let's go ahead and place this symbolic expression in some single quotes, and then I'm going to go ahead and yank that, and we can go ahead back into our snippet here and just replace that title name with our ELISP code. It is time to try it out. Let's get into this types file. I'm going to give my TJ tab here and our cursor is placed at the heading. So I can go ahead and enter that and notice that we have the correct JSON file name. Let's create a new buffer here. And again, TJ tab, awesome. The correct JSON file name is created based on the types file name. And that should wrap things up. My name is Mark. Thank you for watching.